An Australian's diagnosed with a blood cancer every 40 minutes and for many, a bone marrow or stem cell transplant is their best hope of a cure. An exact genetic match is needed for the best chance, but the nation's bone marrow registry struggles to get enough donors, especially from ethnically diverse backgrounds. Reporter Lucy Carter and producer Kirsten Robb were invited along to observe a stem cell transplant and to see exactly what's involved for, pr for prospective donors. Yes, and then turn left, please. Okay. <clears throat> it's a big day for Jenny Baker. That's good. You don't like back seats. No, no, like seats, do you? She's on her way to Melbourne's Peter McCallum Cancer Centre to donate some of her stem cells. A lot of people have sort of, they're saying that, you know, I'm a hero, but I refute that wholeheartedly. It's an even more significant day for Jenny's younger sister, Melissa, who is about to receive those stem cells. I was diagnosed with Hodgkin lymphoma in 2013. Uh, went through a whole lot of treatments and had response to some, but never, nothing ever really worked um, to get me completely into remission. <laughs> this transplant procedure may be Melissa's last chance at a cure. Stem cells are used to treat a range of conditions, but mostly blood cancers, leukemias, lymphomas, diseases like that. They're a last resort option for those patients who've already been through chemotherapy and other forms of treatment that have not worked. So this is their, their last option. I've just had to have eight injections leading up to this to stimulate my bone marrow. I'm a favourite sister. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to save her life, basically. Despite being sisters, Jenny is not a perfect match for this donation. Jenny's a half-matched donor. I don't have, I've got three siblings. Um, none of them were full matches, and I don't have a match on the bone marrow registry anywhere in the world. So a half-matched transplant is the next best option. With your, your heritage, so mine's um, mixed Italian uh, English. Um, so because we have like intermingling of the races a lot these days, um, everyone has a pretty um, mis mixed up genetic makeup, so it's hard to find someone who perfectly matches you. In a perfect world, Melissa would have found an exact match on a bone marrow donor registry. However, the registry is currently struggling to keep pace with Australia's ethnic diversity. Currently, less than 1% of the Australians registered to donate are from Aboriginal or Middle Eastern backgrounds. The Australian Bone Marrow Donor Registry is hoping that its new, simpler test will encourage more people to sign up. It's a cheek swab that's posted to prospective donors and takes less than a minute. At the moment we have around 160,000 donors on the registry. But our problem is that most of those donors look a lot like me. So they're very white and very middle-aged. So what we need are young male donors, 18 to 30 year olds, from a range of different ethnic backgrounds. When you're collecting stem cells, what you want is whiskey, not beer. You don't want really big volumes because it's got to go into somebody. Jenny's stem cell donation will take about three hours. I think I'm just going to get hooked up to a machine today and they'll just take out what they need out of one arm, put it through a machine and whiz it around and put the blood back in the other arm and do whatever they've got to do to it and give it to Melissa. Only our target cells will go into the bag and there's everything else goes back to your donor. So that's the beauty of a You're going to be able to use your arm now, so that's really, really good for you and me. Largely these days, over 90% of the time, the donation involves a short course of injections and then sitting in a comfy chair for a morning while the stem cells are filtered out of your blood and your blood is returned to you. Just look the other way, because I am. One, two, three. Right. Feels fine. Yeah, I'm comfortable. You've done a good job. He's perfect. He can, he can come back. <laughs> Melissa will know in about two months whether the donation and transplant have been a success. This afternoon I'll have her stem cells infused into me. I'll have a bone marrow biopsy on day 30 to look at the myelodysplasia and I'll have another, a PET scan on day 60. So they'll be the early indicators. Um, if they're both clear then we'll say that I'm in remission. But obviously it's going to be long term follow up for quite a long time. So. I guess we're not going to say it's a success until I'm in remission for five years. 
Melissa's transplant procedure carries significant risks because Jenny isn't a full match. My understanding is there's a higher risk of graft versus host disease because Jenny's immune system is only a half match to my body. So that means that her immune system can then attack my normal cells. Um, so that's something that will sort of be juggling for the rest of my life. The sisters hope more Australians, especially those from more diverse backgrounds, will register as bone marrow donors. It can save a life. Um, it's, it's a simple process, it's easy and it's life-saving. It's a big day. Um, I'm, I'm just hoping it works.